this is an epitaph for myself. When I shall be without regret And shall mortality forget When I shall die who lived for this The things I miss And you who notice where I lie Ask not my name, it is not I The first Montana Pastoral I am no shepherd of a child's surmises I have seen fear where the coiled serpent rises Thirst where the grasses burn in early May And thistle, mustard, and the wild oat stay There is dust in this air I saw in the heat grasshoppers busy in the threshing wheat. So to this hour, through the warm dusk I drove to blizzards sifting on the hissing stove, and found no images of pastoral will, but fear, thirst, hunger, and this huddled chill. The second is entitled Montana 50 Years Ago. Gaunt kept house with her child for the old man. Met at the train, dust driven as the sink she came to, the child white as the alkali. To the west, distant mountains, the big lake to the northeast, dead trees and almost dead in the front yard, the front door locked and nailed, a hand pump in the sink. Outside the land of gophers, cottontails, and rattlesnakes, in good years of alfalfa, oats, and wheat. Root cellar, blacksmith shop, milk house and barn, granary corral, an old world almanac to thumb at night, the child coughing, the lamp smoked, the chores done. So he came to her one night, to the front room, now bedroom, and moved in. Nothing was said, nothing was ever said. And then the child died and she disappeared. This was Montana 50 years ago. A recurrent topic for the epitaph that I have attempted to do the, the final statement of here lies my wife. Eternal peace be to us both with her decease. In another vein, there, there is a character I call Junior Freud. An Oedipian mom and dad made Junior Freud feel pretty bad. And when they died, he was so vexed, he never after heterosexed. Finally, the modern version of modern love. She has a husband, he a wife. What a way to spend a life. So whenever they are free, they synchronize adultery and neither one would dare to stop without a simultaneous plot. Two quotations, very brief, occur to me. Unobtrusive profundity, love builds of what time takes away till death itself is less than change. Or on the uh, 
the spinster aunt, nor was there anything to give a daily meaning to her life but the blank taste of time. I shall read Miramar Beach, in which I trust you can hear the Pacific Ocean on a Southern California beach. The night is still, the unfailing surf in passion and subsidence moves as at a distance. The glass walls and redwood are my utmost being. And is there, there, in the last shadow, there in the final privacies of unaccosted grace, is there gracing the tedium to death an intimation, something much like love, like loneliness, a drowse in states more primitive than peace, in the warm wonder of winter sun. A brief dedicatory poem to my wife. And does the heart grow old? You know in the indiscriminate green of summer or in earliest snow, a landscape is another scene, inchoate and anonymous. And every rock and bush and drift, as our affections alter us, will alter with the season shift. So love by love we come at last, as through the exclusions of a rhyme or the exactions of a past to the simplicity of time, the antiquity of grace, where yet we live in terror and delight with love as quiet as regret and a love like anger in the night. This is an epitaph for myself. When I shall be without regret and shall mortality forget, when I shall die who lived for this, I shall not miss the things I miss. And you who notice where I lie, ask not my name, it is not I.